What's going on everyone, it's Gadgets Boy, welcome to another video and uh, this one's a bit different because as you can see next to me, this is the Bentley Flying Spur, the V8 version. There's also a W12 with a 6, -lit six litre engine, but this is the 4 litre version, uh, but this is no flying spur, no ordinary flying spur. This is the unifying spur. And the reason being that this has got this artwork that's wrapped around it and it's designed by Richard Morris. And uh, was it Rich Morris? Anyway, hopefully he doesn't get mad at me for saying his name wrong. Uh, but yeah, it's wrapped around with this nice piece of artwork and it's all about love. It's all about diversity, inclusion, and uh, Bentley's sort of future uh, goal to like make sure there's diversity in everything that they do and inclusivity as well. And ultimately love as well. Love is love. Especially with this kind of car, everything is handcrafted as well. So, you know, it's made with love as well. Uh, besides that, it just looks beautiful. I love the ride. It looks really nice. The artwork is turning heads everywhere. Uh, we've been driving it. So we stopped by uh, Browns in London and we drove all the way to Edinburgh, which is where we are. I don't know if you can tell about the background. And we ended up at the Balmoral uh, Hotel here in Edinburgh. Same hotel chain, wonderful spot, absolutely fantastic. We had a nice breakfast there and we stayed over at the Balmoral uh, here in Edinburgh. Again, beautiful place, just grand. Absolutely love it. Let's talk about the car. Even though this is called a unifying spur for the sake of the artwork, this is still a flying spur V8 4 litre. And uh, starting with the design, we look at the front, we've got this big front grille and uh, the crystal headlights are still there, it looks fantastic. I love what they've done with the front. And then we've got the flying B here that pops in and out whenever you start the engine as well. So as long as you actually unlock the car, that pops out when you lock the car, pops back down, hides it so no one rubs it. It's got this nice finishing on it as well, which is pretty neat. I love the black sort of contrast as well, amazing. And then we go to the side of the car. We've got this big wheel. This is a 22 inch alloy here. And we've got the uh, Pirelli tires on there at the moment, P0s. And then you've got the uh, brake caliper, the red brake caliper on there, which looks fantastic as well. You've got the carbon fiber sort of finishing detailing on the front uh, as well. And then we move to, move to the side. And then they've got like tiny little details here and there. For example, if you go right to the back here, there's a little Bentley logo here that also mirrors to the body of the car there, which I quite like. It's very like photogenic. So something that I take a lot of photo of and I'm just uh, in awe of it. And you've got the carbon fiber finishing as well, the uh, sort of step uh, over there. And then we go to the back of the car and it's just a nice looking Bentley. If you look at the back of it, we've got the uh, low profile sort of look in terms of, it's kind of slim profile. You've got this small sort of boot spoiler on there as well. Uh, Bentley logo on the back with the flying B as well. Again, you press this to open the boot, uh, which is, kind of snazzy. And then we look at the oval pipes as well. Quad exhaust pipes there, looks really nice. Again, carbon fiber detailing all around it. You've got the splitter there, which looks really nice. You can see big boots as well. Uh, that wasn't even planned. I didn't even mean to open it, but it's got a big boot uh, in there as well. So you can store a lot of things. You've got all that camera equipment. And you've got the buttons here as well to lock. Uh, you've got one to just close the boot or you can press the other one to completely lock the whole car as well. So if it's that you're getting out the car, you can press that and it locks uh, the whole thing for you. But that's pretty much about it. But in terms of the art, in terms of the artwork on it, it looks fantastic. It's got that big face, uh, the dancing face on top as well. I uh, love the little writing on the back. And what's good about this artwork is when you look at it on the back, it's not too obvious. It's not that obvious. So when people are behind you, they just think it's uh, just a different paintwork. But when you go on the side, then you see the full art, like, artwork, which looks amazing. But that's about it for the exterior. Let's get on the inside and see how plush and luxurious uh, this is, it's, it's as luxurious as they come. Uh, let's have a look. Welcome to the inside of the unifying spur slash flying spur. Uh, we've got our roof, panoramic roof there for the front and the back. So you've got buttons for the passengers at the back uh, to fully open that up and, you know, enjoy the sun while it's shining. But for this one, we can see the artwork from the inside as well. So it's beautiful outside and on the inside. Yes, I know a bit of cheese there. And uh, we've got buttons all on the top as well to control that uh, sunroof over there. And there's buttons all around here to control different things. For example, you've got the buttons to control the uh, privacy screens all on the back. Uh, so if you've got uh, you know, a VIP passenger, for example, you can do that. So this is very good for a chauffeur, uh, for a chauffeur business, for example. If you, ha if you have the money to buy this, this is like £153 plus, £1,000 plus, not £153. <laughs> so... For 153,000 pounds just over, uh, if you're someone who can afford that, you can maybe afford a driver as well. You can sit in the back and enjoy the, the journey. The seat is one of the most comfortable seats I've ever been in. Uh, it's got massage, uh, it's got, so you can keep it cool or hot if you wish to. You can actually adjust the headrest as well to sort of uh, support your head and relax yourself whilst you're driving. Same for the passengers at the back as well. Even the passenger headrest at the back is a lot more plush. It's got this nice soft uh, finishing on it, which I quite like. And then 
going back to the buttons here, I'm all about the gadgets and tech. This has got the name sound system on here. It's, called, it's spelled N-A-I-M. And uh, the part of the focal group, it's just a really good sound system in terms of bass, treble, the mids. And you can control the sound system on here as well. But this is quite cool. Uh, before I get to that screen as well, I'm just talking all over the place. So I'm just excited about uh, the interior and what it's all about. Uh, the buttons here, you've got this nice finishing on each rotary dials here. You've got three rotary dials here. Uh, two of them are for the climate control system and then one for starting the engine and changing the drive mode. So you've got sports, you've got Bentley mode, you've got comfort and custom. So if you go into custom mode, you can adjust things like your the way the steering feels, the way the suspensions feel, and you can uh, the way it handles the road, that kind of stuff. Uh, it just means if you're driving uh, around town, you might want to put in comfort mode or on the long journey, for example. Uh, but when you really want to, you know, do a bit of sporty driving, put it in sport mode, and you get to a bit of more hoomph uh, with it as well. You got paddle shifts to do some manual gear shifting if you wish to do so. And but yeah, that's about it for the buttons. There, it's just loads of buttons for climate control. Uh, funny enough. And uh, I quite like the gear shifter. It's got that big B logo on there as well, which is pretty cool. The steering wheel uh, is heated as well, so you can keep it nice and warm during the winter season. And I love the stalks as well. They've got a nice uh, finishing on them, uh, which is, again, level of premium quality you can expect in a Bentley. You've got carbon fibre finishing everywhere, and then the door cards are nice. Little designs it's got this, like, trapeze, whatever shape that is. It's all on there. Looks pretty cool. And then... We'll look on here, it's got this analog clock on here with this Bentley clock, which I really like. It's probably got some official name for it, but forgive me. And uh, for the climate control, the ventilation here, uh, the vents, there's a little choke sort of looking design thing, which when you pull it, opens up, opens it up. When you push it back in, closes it up. So you have to wait slight seconds for it, for it to happen. It, just isn't, it doesn't just happen instantaneously. And then you've got two USB ports on the front, full USB and some at the back as well for the passengers. Um, it's quite funny for a premium car, it's still a flap opening and closing for the USBs and there's no USB-C. Uh, it's got Apple CarPlay, but via USB cable, so it's not wireless, uh, which is a shame. Uh, but I suppose the next iteration of this, they can put that in there. That's something that's quite new or maybe software updates, who knows. So once you've started the engine, you've got this digital display, which is nice and sharp and colorful. You can easily see it in all kinds of different uh, environments. By the way, the cabin is so quiet. There's hardly any road noises or tire noises or wind noise or anything, which is amazing. Uh, but back to the screen, you can press this button here, which allows you to change it over. So if you don't want anything else, you, you can just keep it nice and minimal. It's got this nice snazzy uh, looking thing. Here. You got compass and all this temperature stuff <laughs> that you can do. And then if you press it again, it goes back to the display. But what you can also do is, uh, if you don't want to see any of it completely, you can just press and hold it, and it just kind of all just blends in into one, and you just see nothing, and it's just nice and minimal. So, but you know, as a tech guy, I love to have it uh, on the digital display, which is where you can control different things. For example, if we go into car, you can see your car settings and adjust things like your drive mode. So you got your uh, sports, uh, you got Bentley, you got comfort, and custom. If we go into custom, you can edit everything from engine and gearbox so you can change your throttle responses and stuff like that uh, you got ride handling which you can change from sport bentley and comfort and steering the way it feels as well so depending on what you drive what you're doing and and stuff like that you got your uh, temps and stuff and you know tire uh, gauge and stuff like that tire pressure gauge you can look at that as well and uh, it tells you what's there and suitable for up to what whatever speed as well which is quite kind of neat actually uh, if you go into climate very basic and you know straightforward change climate settings I uh, go to applications, news, weather, etc. Go into sound system, you can adjust that name, sound system. So active bass, subwoofer, bass, and treble. You can change all those settings to suit your preference. Uh, this has got wireless Qi charging as well, by the way, down here. And it tells you when it's charging up here. And uh, go back into settings. You can change different things from displays. Uh, display settings, so that head-up display, you can change the content on there, the brightness, and the actual positioning as well. Pretty straightforward. Uh, we go back and uh, you can change the infotainment display settings, the illumination in the car, uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, go back down. It's nice and straightforward and simple. There's not much of settings that you can actually change, which is pretty cool. You don't want, you don't want too much. You don't want it to be, to be too complicated, uh, which is uh, what I'd like. And uh, yeah, media options. So you've got DAB radio, FM, and also, like I said, Apple CarPlay, you can have it in there. And then we've got the driver side here, instrument cluster again. Digital display, nice and big. Uh, you can change view as well, so by pressing the button, if you've been in an Audi before, you can see the sort of like where design uh, sort of morphs into, into one because, you know, Volkswagen Group. This button layout here is very similar uh, that I've seen before. So you've got views, so you can change different views on the right side 
the left side stays the same and then at the top there you can scroll across to different things and uh, you can go up and down as well and see different information so you can change that to different information like traffic signs and you can see your speed limit when you drive in and all that kind of stuff uh, which is pretty neat so in terms of the engine this is a four liter v8 engine and in terms of miles per gallon in terms of uh, consumption you're looking at 22.2 combined miles per gallon which is in the best but i don't think you buy this for that sort of thing to get loads of miles per gallon out of it so that's uh, completely that's fine i'm, I'm going to ignore that um, also we drove from london all the way to edinburgh so we started from browns we took the great north road all the way down here seven to eight hours plus because we stopped along the way and stuff i think i filled up once uh, which to be honest that's not too bad and uh, uh, that cost me about 50 pounds in petrol uh, to fill that up a little bit just to top it up performance wise you're looking at 0 to 62 in 4.1 seconds and this will give you 442 brake horsepower very similar to what you'd get in the rs6 for example i think it's the same engine uh, so in that sense you get the same sort of experience and performance and uh, it's quite a, kind of quick off the line for a car that weighs more than 2300 kilograms and uh, just or just about around that much and this is this is a heavy vehicle uh, and uh, shifting that much weight uh, with that sort of engine it's it's actually impressive and it's very eager as well when you drive in and you're trying to take corners and stuff um, I kind of took it a little bit uh, some down some winding roads in Edinburgh and you can feel it handling it really well sound as well you know when you're driving around you don't hear anything there's no road noise there's no wind noise and that's again I keep saying it that's the sort of experience I'd expect when driving a Bentley uh, especially the flying spur uh, which is amazing I think uh, in terms of stats as well what else is there 770 newton meters of torque uh, really does push you to the seat as well when you put your foot down you really do feel it uh, but driver experience I think is fantastic I had a really good time with it driving from London all the way to Edinburgh uh, shout out to the hotel chain as well for putting us up uh, which is really cool um, we'll put all their information in the description area so you guys can check them out as well but in the meantime as always let me know what you think in the comments below uh, if you had that sort of money would you pick up one of these or what are the alternatives for you guys let me know in the comments below but in the meantime smash the like button subscribe share it as well if you like this and uh we'll see you guys in the next one big up john behind the camera uh yes see you later